So one thing I've always found kind of intriguing is video game box art. You have these works of digital entertainment that exist within the spooky, futuristic virtual realm, and these hunks of plastic with a drawing on the front are like their vessel within the real world. A quick representation of what is to be expected when we put the game in our machine. And yet they seem to vary wildly between great and just terrible. I guess physical media is kind of fading away in a lot of gaming markets. I mean, a ton of PC games don't come with the game itself on the disc in the box anymore, so when everyone is downloading their shit, does anyone even care what's on the cover? Well, before everyone does stop caring, I wanted to go through some of my favorites from all corners of the world. The best and worst box art there is, or Bogart, as my spell check keeps insisting I change it to. I did feel the urge to hit some balls today. Suppose yours will have to do. Motherfucker! First off, let's start with the Yakuza series, which started out in Japan with a phenomenal minimalistic cover. The silhouette of a man in a suit kicking the Frickin' skies, I'm too scared to swear anymore. Fucker. Which is a good, basic representation of the core foundation of the gameplay. No, 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 no. And I like to see that in a game's cover. What's the purest form the game could be shown in? Boom, a dapper lad launching his foot into the air. It worked so well that when it came time to adapt Yakuza into a Japanese live-action film, they used the silhouette again, but with clips from the movie filling it in. The western cover is fine, it won't age as well because it's using a CGI model, but it's a pretty cool pose. Putting the main character's back tattoo into center frame, which to a western audience would definitely scream Japanese crime. It's the second game where things start falling apart. So the Japanese version has the protagonist and antagonist staring each other down on the cover Cover, which looks cool. And now I'm thinking, well, that's great, because the first game's cover in the West was one guy with his back turned, and now they have two guys with their back turned. This is a perfect opportunity to complement the first Western cover by using the Japanese one untouched. One guy, two guy, but nope. Someone made the decision to take the Japanese cover and then just zoom it in on Kazuma over here, so now it's just the first cover again. Why though, Ryuji is clearly just off screen. Were they afraid of having two shirtless guys on the cover of the game? Thought big western manly men wouldn't like that? Well. They're in for a shocker when they play the series. Yakuza 3 in Japan is this awesome shot of Kazuma looking up at the skies, melancholic, soulful, tasteful. But over in the West, we hit an all-time low with this super close-up of an untouched Kazuma model face, with an unkempt sixth-generation goatee fuzzing it up down there. Come on, guys, really? Really? You release this on the same day in the West as Final Fantasy XIII? I mean, purely based on aesthetics, I know what I'm gonna be going for. Now, Yakuza 4 in Japan is an alright sort of collage of all the main players in the story, but I think this is the first time the Western box art really beats it out. Our main four playable characters style in with a black color palette as a brushstroke reveals the city behind them. The stroke even gives them their shadows underneath, providing a real eastern vibe. They also managed to get both the words sex and sexy in there, so good job. From there on out, the covers have been pretty similar up until Yakuza 6, which in Japan features legendary Asian film star Takeshi Kitano on the box art who I guess is unknown over here to the general population. So our cover's just gonna be the back turned around again, which doesn't look all that badass anymore with a young lady and a baby in the shot. And all I'm wondering when looking at this is, is Ryuji just out of shot and we can't see him? Still, big ups for the 4-1 though, that was, you know, that was really good. Resident Evil is a video game franchise with boxes. Their covers were all alright, but none of them really stuck out to me until we got to the 2002 GameCube Resident Evil 1 remake. Now in America, the cover took the form of Protag Jewel's model here being grabbed by the ghoulies. Sort of just in a hallway, it's an event from the game. Representative of what happens in the title, but a bit forgettable. It's not really showing this moment in the game as very dynamic or stylish. But then the European cover. Oh baby. This is how we, you do it. Seriously, Charlie? This is what you bring me out here for in the prime of my youth to look at two words on a red background? Listen here. This is good shit. This is brand confidence. The Resident Evil series at that point was already legendary for kickstarting mainstream interest in survival horror. And what is this game at its core? What is this remake at its core? It's the first Resident Evil. It's THE Resident Evil. It's Resident Evil. Nothing more. Nothing less. What else do we need to say? Anything else added here would just take away from the grandiosity of those two words when combined. They might as well have written on the cover, Resident Evil, bitch. Resident Evil 4 has a similar problem to a lot of American covers where it's Leon the Protag superimposed onto something. In this case, a bunch of angry villagers. Kinda looks like he's gonna be mobbed and doesn't even realize. But then there's the UK cover, oh shit. How did they get away with this? 
A lone figure with a chainsaw standing within the dark, oppressive shadow of the woods, blood red engulfing the sky. This like elevates the tone of Resident Evil 4 beyond what's actually in the game, wackety schmackety romp that it is. I mean, in 2005, it had been quite a while since the last numbered title in the series, so imagine seeing this cover in a shop with the words Resident Evil 4 looming over it. Shit! And turns out the game was good as well, which always helps. Metal Gear Solid is another series that, in my opinion, has had better treatments in Europe than over in the US, cover-wise. In the UK, all four main Metal Gear Solid covers have had artwork by the series' amazing artist Yoji Shinkawa, emblazoned on the front. The US did get his cover for two, but the three cover over there is just like, just a bunch of stuff coming at you. But in Europe, the two and three covers really complement each other. And the fourth one is just amazing, a close-up of Old Snake's face as he turns on his solid eye, its beam piercing the cover as if to say, Okay, time for one last mission. America went for flabby CGI face, which as we have established before in this video and can now confirm as we are 10 years removed from the release of this game, does not and has not aged very well. So when MGS5 was in the works, I was hoping, nay praying, that we'd still get a Yoji Shinkawa cover to complement the series so far over here. But nah, big CGI snake face worldwide, breaking the 17 years of awesome theming they were on a roll with. Yet one more nail in that game's coffin. Silent Hill, another Konami series, has also been an interesting study in box art. I challenge you to figure out what's happening on the cover of any region's version of Silent Hill 1. The Japanese box, I guess, is the end of the word silent, smeared across some tiles in blood. The, the, the Euro one is, I guess, a lesser, just really messed up and distorted. She looks like a mannequin or something. She's like the spooky girl from the game, okay, whatever, I'm fine with that. But it's the American one, where... <laughs> I gotta ask some questions. It's the protagonist Harry Mason, but as a as a ghost With two other characters faces sort of one up here and the other in his neck. I mean it's out there Silent Hill 2 has a really cool Japanese cover a late game save area looks mysterious and out there The American one has a face looks like more of a follow-up to the original Euro cover honestly And our cover has some eyes never really do it for me But Silent Hill 3 has a really cool Euro cover Heather Mason the main character all film grained up and looking vulnerable on the front looks creepy as hell Japan is yes, just kind of there. It's all right. It's America that really screws it up really guys a not PNG of Heather just on top of some subway. You can't just Photoshop Outer Glow onto her to make her stand out from the background. That's some like YouTube thumbnail level shit. American covers aren't always bad though, there are some examples where I prefer them to the other regions. Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction has a really cool American cover. Very simple and emblematic of the series, what are you seeing 99% of the time while playing Ratchet? The face of a robot on this alien's back. So what better way to show the arrival of Ratchet on next gen at the time than a close-up of this iconic angle? The Eurobox is just like a jumble, a bunch of stuff, going way overboard with all the characters and enemies. Of course, we can't bring Ratchet covers up without showing off some of the amazing Japanese attempts. My golly gosh, oh, oh yeah, they, they are going on an adventure. No More Heroes US cover is also cool. Travis striking a pose with his beam katana, a splatter in the back with a title on it. Simply, but effective. It will age better than the rest of the world's weird Travis and Sylvia just standing in the street look. Not quite sure what kind of mood they were going for there. No More Heroes 2 is way less exciting than the first American cover, just looks a bit cheap. Just cut Travis out, put him on there, I guess. What do they do for this one in Japan though? You guessed it, something goddamn amazing looking. Like, who who looks at this and doesn't go, okay, that's the one. That's the one we're gonna use everywhere. The western one looks like it's only a hair away from being one of those fan-made covers you can find if you type fake game sequels into Google. Okay, so I could go over loads and loads of really cool Japanese box art, but I think I'll end the video on, like, my favorite box art of all time. God Hand's cover in the West is kind of memorable, even if it isn't as messed up as the promotional material. The realistic look doesn't really fit the cartoony vibe of the game, but whatever, a cool attempt to try something different. Even if it does give me vibes of that weird PS2 Final Fight game. But then we have... the Japanese one. Minimalism at its absolute finest. Perfection. What's this game about? Punching people. What's it called? God Hand. <laughs> What's on the cover? Nothing but a ripped-ass fist on fire rocketing forward. What's it gonna punch? You're just gonna have to buy the game to find out. It sums up everything about God Hand's core without any superfluous material. Bam. The God Hand.
I like confident covers like this that sum something up with as little as possible. That's why I never really got that mad about the Bioshock Infinite cover like a lot of people did. How does Guy with Gun and American Flag on Fire not sum up Bioshock Infinite exactly? When I think God Hand, I think of this fist on this cover. Hell, when I think of just video games, I think of this box art. Anyway, let me know if you've got some favorite covers you love and really get your imagination going. Yeah, you know, I told you we weren't really ending on anything meaningful. A good way to tell is if the YouTuber in question ends the video by query the audience like this, it's a telltale sign they don't have a conclusion. Fucker.